30 odd minutes is sponsored in part by Digital Dowsing. Who are you powered by? For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Hey! Yeah. Welcome! Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. It's great to have you guys here. We appreciate your time here aboard the mothership. Tonight, we've set the mothership down. Actually, where have we set the mothership down? Oh my god, that's creepy. That is seriously creepy. Oh my god, <laughs> scary children. Scary, dark, black-eyed children. Oh, I need an adult. Aww. Okay. Okay. Crew, are you here? Andrew Lake, are you there in the control center? I'm here, Jeff. How are you? Look fine. Fun. I'm all alone, though. Matt's out on the, uh, the planet surface, so to speak. Or he got abducted by the creepy children. <laughs> yeah, we did leave him outside a little too long. He might be have uh, been eaten by them. Andrew, don't turn around. Well, it's, it's, it's too weird. It's okay. Your best I'll take your advice. All right. Look forward. Anyway. All right, well, good to have you here. And of course, Sarah in our con uh, communication center. How are you tonight, Sarah? <laughs> I'm good, man. No complaints at all. All right, good. Happy as pie. Who are we saying hello to tonight? I want to say hello to Huntington, West Virginia. They are watching our Mothership Signal on Huntington Public Access Television. Yay! Yay! We love you, Virginia. We're everywhere. West Virginia. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. And we have a really good email tonight. It says, hey guys, I am a huge fan of the show. I am a broke college student, but I was wondering if I donated $20 or something to the show. Could I maybe get an autographed picture of the crew? I know that's not a lot of money, but at this point in my life, it actually is. A faithful Michigan oddball, Christoph Davidson. Okay, Christoph, been there, done that. I couldn't even afford $20, so. We don't have that now. Yeah, so <laughs> seriously, $20 is nothing? No, that's everything, and thank you so much. So of course we'll send you something special. We've already started to autograph this very special picture, which is also a sticker, and on the back, Eric signed it as well, but it's on the part that you can like take off, so. Yeah. Yay, Eric! Yay, Eric! We love Eric! Eric. <laughs> and we'll also throw you in this something special surprise, so wait for it. Yeah. But we love your money, and we love that you watch. So thank you. And we also want to say that uh, Bubba Beasley, he wrote us again, but this time he actually sent a photo of himself catching up on previous 30-odd missions. And, quote, he said, on the can at work, LOL. Nice. Thanks, Bubba. Nice to share that moment with you, Bubba. Yeah. Life is complete now. <laughs> not, not the first time Jeff's been taken into a toilet, though. No, I'm sure not. You know. <laughs> and just so you know, you can download us on iTunes at any time, including on your phones, that you can then take into the can and waste time at work with. And it's free. We endorse that fully. Okay. Why it's work? Free. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the photos of us from your toilet. <laughs> it's, good, it's good to know we're classing up the joint. All right, we know you don't have a lot of time because you watch 30-odd minutes. Neither do we. And when we find your favorite paranormal celebrities, sometimes we ask them just one question. One question interview. 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 We're here with Josh Gates, the star of Sci-Fi's Destination Truth. Josh Gates, you are on airplanes all the time, crossing countries and time zones. How does your 5 o'clock shadow know when it's time to come out? It's, uh, it's permanent. It's, a, it's actually a permanent 5 o'clock shadow. I had it done several years ago, and uh, it never grows or changes. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Good sport there from the uh, Michigan Paranormal Conference. Great fun. Great fun. If you watched last week's mission, you saw some of the festivities. It was really great stuff. Okay. Uh, tonight, we are talking about black-eyed children. It's a freaky subject. No, not just dark eyes. We're talking about black-eyed kids, or BEKs, as they're also known. Are these seemingly human creatures alien, demonic, or just an urban legend spread via internet hoaxes and folklore? Tonight, we'll explore the subject with the founder of Two Crows Paranormal and the author of the new book, The Black-Eyed Children. Take a look.
first documented in 1998. First reported by Texan journalist Brian Bethel. According to Bethel, approached his car and asked him to be let in. He initially thought nothing of opening the door, but then he realized that her eyes were oddly. I, I couldn't. Black. I couldn't look in, in the eyes. I felt like I was like that. She kept knocking on my window. When I looked in his eyes, all I felt was this extreme. The first time I opened her eyes, they were very black and they lost that they could not enter the car unless they were black. invited. I felt like something that forced me to open the door. When I saw him. Please welcome, live from the Northern Arizona, David Weatherly. <laughs> David, thank you for joining hey, us. Hey, Jeff, what? thanks for having me on. Guys. Absolutely, it's great to have you on the mothership. What is a black eyed kid? That was creepy, by the way. So <laughs> tell us, what, what is a black eyed kid? <laughs> Well, that's still sort of the question as to exactly what they are. But in simple terms, they are these very odd, creepy children who are showing up at people's doorsteps. They're showing up at uh, cars and parking lots, hotel rooms, virtually anywhere. They are knocking at the door, uh, getting the person's attention, and insisting on an invitation into the person's home or vehicle. Okay. Now, how how long has this been going on? I mean, because... I've got a few neighbors with some dark eyes. My daughter's got brown eyes, not quite, but on the right light, it's a little bit creepy. How long have they been around? Yeah, they've been around a lot longer than is commonly thought. The the current trend of black-eyed children in this uh, acronym BEKs really came into vogue in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s with the advent of the internet and uh, the Brian Bethel story. However, during research uh, on my book, I ended up tracing these preachers, for lack of a better word, pretty far back and have some very interesting stories from uh, uh, well before the Internet and even television. Right, well, let's, let's start with the, the newspaper report uh, from 1998. We actually have a, a, a rendition. Talk us through this, because this is when the, it started to go in mainstream. What, what, what happened back in 1998? Uh, this is a Texas journalist named Brian Bethel who uh, went to a shopping strip center to pay a bill late one evening. And as he was sitting in his car writing the check, he was approached by two young boys. Now, they came to his car. They tapped on the window. He was a little bit nervous, so he, he put the window down just a little bit, and they started asking him strange questions. They said, hey, mister, uh, we want to see a movie, but we forgot our money. Can you give us a ride? And Bethel had the, the awareness to look over at the movie marquee and realize that the movie they were talking about was already two-thirds done. So right from the get-go, the story made no sense. Bethel become, became very uneasy as these children continued to talk to him. And they were making comments like, we're just a couple of kids. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, Bethel's uneasiness became... Uh, outright fear when he suddenly realized these two kids had solid black eyes. We're not talking about just the pupil. The entire sclera was completely black. So uh, he ran away, basically, from these two kids. And he later posted the story on an early internet chat room. It really resonated with people. And other people started saying, wow, I've had an encounter with these things, too. The legend sort of grew from there on the internet. Right, so it's exploded since 1998, thanks to the Internet. But you're saying they go back further than that. How, how far back do they go? When do, when do we start hearing about these accounts of black-eyed children? You know, I have a very convincing story from the early 1950s mm -hmm. that is, is definitely fits all the, uh, the standard black-eyed child encounters. Uh, however, 
I'm recently speaking to some Native Americans who are telling me about <clears throat> some tribal legends of black-eyed beings that appeared uh, long, long ago, but even before the white man entered this country. So it's really unclear yet, but it does seem that these beings have been here for a long time. Okay, now what? I mean, what does folklore tell us? What's the legend? What? Why? Why the black eyes? What are they? What are they here for? Well, that gets into some of the possible explanations for these kids, and one of the most popular explanations is that they are some kind of a demonic being that is intruding on our reality, that they want something from us, whether it's energy or, uh, you know, who, who knows what. But the folklore is uh, is pretty fascinating. It ties into de- demonology and the fact that a, a demonic entity supposedly cannot completely take the form of a human. It has to have something that is distorted or misformed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people believe that these are entities completely human in form except for the eyes. Um, There are some other pretty convincing theories, too. One thing that's interesting, Jeff, is when you go back in folklore, and what I found by exploring this topic was that the stories are back there. It's just that in the past, they weren't called black-eyed kids. You know, the story from the 1950s, the, the legend of that story was that Harold, this gentleman who met the, this kid, Harold met the devil. Because by the standards and the, the cultural boundaries of that time, yes, the being had black eyes, but that's not, they didn't identify it as a black-eyed kid. They identified it as Satan himself. Scary. Okay, so the 1950s, we actually have an image yeah, so, I mean, is this a artist depiction here, or are we talking about uh, some weird photo yes. you dug up? <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's a depiction that's very similar to the uh, story with Harold from the 1950s in, in uh, rural Northeast. Okay, so really, we don't have um, images, right? Are there any, like, genuine images or video clips or anything like that as far as the existence of these things? There are not, and that gets rather interesting. Uh, first of all, it, it wouldn't really convince anyone, quite honestly, because digital manipulation is so easy at this point. You can make anyone have black eyes with a couple of seconds on a Photoshop. Um, there are some images on the Internet that you'll find that purport to be uh, genuine photographs of black-eyed children. However, they are not. They're uh, altered images. One thing that is fascinating is that in a lot of cases, where there are security cameras present during these encounters, the equipment malfunctions. And it turns out that there's a, a glitch, the cameras stop working, there's, there's nothing there to be seen. Interesting. Now, what are some of the, I mean, from flipping through your book and, and reading some accounts online, it seems like that these are Caucasian children, tend to be 10 to 12, are, are there exceptions to this rule? I mean, is this, is, is it pretty standard across the board that that's, that's what they look like? Yeah, that's pretty standard. Uh, the, the children are almost all, always Caucasian, in fact, very pale or pasty skinned. On occasion, there are descriptions of these children having olive or Mediterranean <clears throat> skin, mm-hmm. but otherwise, you know, there, I have seen no reports of, for instance, you know, Asian or African-American uh, black-eyed children showing up. As far as the age range, it varies a little bit, but you have to remember that a lot of the people encountering these kids don't have children of their own, so they're sort of estimating. And what we find is about uh, 95% of the time, the estimate falls in that range of 8 to 12 years old. So they're only appearing in front of people without children? That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh, so there there are some people that have children that encounter them, definitely. Okay. So, I mean, so I mean, what's so fascinating, your book is full of, you know, different accounts, people you've talked to. Um, you know, are you seeing any patterns at all? Is it nighttime? Is it weekends? Is it single people? Is it rich, poor? Any patterns you've been able to find? You know, that's one of the fascinating things about this, Jeff. There are so few patterns to be found. I mean, I've looked at religious or spiritual background, and there's no commonality. I've looked at age, uh, ethnic background, geographic location, just about anything. 
and there just aren't any patterns that crosses all the lines. However, one of the patterns that has emerged recently that I find very interesting is that there are a high number of people encountering these kids who work in a uh, an authoritative position, uh, law enforcement, military, uh, government officials. Uh, more than normal number of those types of uh, people are encountering these kids. Very interesting. All right, David, we're going to have to take a quick break for the news. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about what these things could be, hear about some of the encounters and, uh, and, and some other Internet phenomena. We'll be right back. In August of 2012, an enormous crop circle appeared overnight in a wheat field in Hampshire, England. The pattern laid out on the wheat was a perfect replication of the Tibetan Buddhist symbol, the endless knot, which represents the eternal flow of time. Buddhists use this symbol to explain their perception of reality. If a person were to walk the lines and circles within this formation, they would be able to cover the whole pattern and finish at the point where they started. This is just one of the many crop circles to have appeared this summer in Great Britain, leaving people to debate on whether they are the result of guerrilla artists or a message from extraterrestrials. Even stranger is the name of the location where this pattern was formed. Cheesefoot Head. Sounds like a friend of SpongeBob SquarePants. In a possibly related news item, video footage from the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Summer Games in London show what appears to be a UFO flying by the stadium during the fireworks display. Television coverage of the event did include blimps to shoot aerial footage, but the object in question does not look like a blimp. It looks more like a classic dish-shaped flying saucer, complete with a dome on top. If this was in fact an alien craft, what better spectacle of mankind to observe than the Olympic Games? One theory as to why the UFO appeared at such a key moment was possibly to distract the crowd from seeing something that would have been too difficult for humans to understand. You know, sort of a timey-wimey thing. I'm Andrew Lake, and oddly enough, that's the news. Thank you, Andrew. We're back. We're back with David Weatherly, author of the book The Black-Eyed Children. Very cool stuff. Okay, so what we've learned so far, there's lots of stories about these things. They're all over the Internet. People are talking about it. Um, but no, no physical evidence, no photographs or anything like that. It kind of reminds me of the story of the Slender Man, which is a fascinating internet tale. Sarah, please, tell us more about the Slender Man. Yeah, so the Slender Man is actually quite recent. It was uh, in 2009. It was posted to a forum board called somethingawful.com. It's kind of a comedy content website. And one user was like, let's try and create our own paranormal images and see if we can come up with some really crazy stuff. And this one guy named Victor Surge created um, this image of a very tall, lanky man, uh, about five, or no, six feet tall to 15 feet tall, um, no face, uh, very white, pale, long arms, always wears a suit, white shirt, black or white tie, and he seems to be drawn to children. Um, so it's kind of the stuff of, ni of anyone's nightmare, really. Um, but what was really compelling about these photos is the story that he put up with them, whereas he made it look like it was an actual photo. The photographer was, you know, had an unknown uh, whereabouts and was most certainly dead. There was something that really resonated with people, and he definitely had the best reaction from other users. They were like, wow, that really kind of creeped me out. Like, he did it in such a way that it just looked official. And from there, it just seemed to kind of start this chain reaction of other people posting things to other forum boards saying, have you heard of this? Because I've actually seen this before. And it kind of took on a life of its own. Even though it's so obvious, if you go back and look, it was started as just like a contest to see who could come up with the creepiest image. Uh, no, so. Th that's so interesting. And so, I mean, something that was definitely fake, you can still go look. Um, uh, people are actually reporting seeing it. David, do you think there's a chance that there's some of that phenom phenomenon going on here with black-eyed children? Whoops, hold on. A little bit in my book was uh, this Tibetan concept of the tulpa. Yep. And uh, the tulpa, essentially, in Western terms, we would call it a thought form. Uh, but if you go back to ancient Tibetan teachings, it's this concept that a being can cr be created through pure mental energy. And what's fascinating about it is that throughout the process, it begins as 
uh, just a construct in the mind. It eventually begins to take on a sort of uh, ghost-like appearance so that people are seeing this phantom image, and eventually it is able to become completely solid so that other people can see and even interact with it. Uh, a tulpa, in Tibetan terms, can basically become its own entity and live its own life however it still has to feed and what it feeds off of to survive is emotional energy what's one of the highest emotional energies fear and uh, that's what we find in a lot of these encounters with these uh, black eyed kids it's almost as if their entire goal is to create a very high level of fear in their victims and then they vanish interesting okay now Something else that sounds uh, similar when, when we were talking about typical black-eyed children, uh, black-eyed kids uh, encounters, it sounds a little bit like alien abduction stories. It's not all that different. And if you look at your, your typical gray alien, right, big dark eyes, you know, uh, pale skin, what are the parallels between aliens and these black-eyed kids? Oh, quite a few, actually. And to tell you the truth, the most popular theory to explain these kids are that they are actually alien-human hybrids uh, because over the past uh, 10 years or so, we've seen an incredible increase in the number of people reporting that they've been abducted and used for some kind of breeding experiment. So what we see is a very strange correlation between people who report being abducted and seeing their hybrid children and the appearance of these black-eyed kids. Uh, because obviously the physical similarities are, are amazing, the solid black eyes. There's a, often in these encounters a reported um, type of mind control being exerted over the uh, victims. And that's something we find in, in the gray alien abductions also, that they are able to communicate telepathically. We see that occasionally in Black Eyed Kid reports, uh, but also this sense that these gray aliens can control people. The black eyed children seem to be attempting to control people. To what end? Uh, yeah, there's a comparison, you know, the black eyed kids and, of course, the gray alien. So, so what, what do these kids want? Do, does anyone actually invite them in? Oh, there's one story that's uh, detailed in the book. In, in fact, it takes up a whole chapter. And uh, it, it's a very frightening, disturbing story, I think. The the quick version of it is that a woman who had her 10-year-old son with her in her vehicle stopped at a convenience store. She ran inside by herself and left her child outside. And when she came back out, she jumped in the, the car, threw her milk and bread on the seat, and, and started the engine. Autopilot, just looking in the rearview mirror and staring back at her, was a, a young boy with solid black eyes. And uh, it, it she had instant fear, uh, instant terror reaction. She jumped out of the car, yanked her son out, and went back inside. And, uh, of course, the, the black-eyed child ended up vanishing. As the story unfolded, she learned that her son had, in fact, invited this child in. Now, he was just seeing a potential playmate. He didn't think there was any harm in this. So, you know, the uh, you can't really blame the child. However, the circumstances that unfolded after that encounter were pretty sad the husband ended up driving the vehicle home he came to to meet his wife at the store she was just too shaken up to even drive her own car so uh, he took her vehicle went to drive home and was in an accident and totaled the vehicle uh, the young boy who had direct contact with this black-eyed child became very ill in fact the doctors could not determine what was wrong with this uh, little boy because his symptoms constantly changed. They thought he had the flu. They thought he had a stomach virus. He, he suddenly broke out. They thought he had the measles. They thought he had appendicitis. And this went on for weeks. They, they couldn't treat him because they couldn't diagnose him. And the mother firmly believes that what, she, what they encountered was something demonic. It took uh, just a lot of attention, a lot of time, and, and some clergy praying over the boy and family members attending to him, but he eventually recovered. So are these things kind of like a harbinger of something bad? I mean, do, do other people report, you know, bad things happening after these experiences? 
Absolutely. That's one of the things that stands out in the reports is that uh, a good portion of these encounters, it appears that the black eyed child is almost an omen and that immediately after the encounter, the negative things tend to happen. You know, family members will pass away. Uh, people have lost their jobs or they've, uh, their relationships have suddenly ended. So very strange things accompany these children. Right. And can you give us another example? I mean, of all the stories in your book, and you've got tons of them, and I imagine since then more have poured in. You know, once people learn you're looking for this stuff, they, they tend to start seeking you out. Uh, what I can't figure out so far, David, do you believe this is just a story, or do you believe this is a genuine thing? They're, they're seeing something. No, I think these people are seeing something. Uh, there are simply too many cases at this point to discount them all. Now, what exactly these children are, I, I'm... I'm not completely convinced, you know, I, I sort of try to lay all the theories out in my book and let people decide themselves, you know, that's, that's really what I wanted to try to accomplish, and it's funny if people read the book and they'll put it down, look at me, and they say, well, I'm convinced they're alien hybrids, and right. I've had other people say, oh, you can convince me, they're demons. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do, however, think that whatever these entities are, they are something sinister. So, not good. Have you had an encounter yet? I mean, have you seen anything that you think might be a black-eyed kid? No, I have not. Okay. Very good. All right. Sarah is in our chat room, and I know folks are in there buzzing about. Sarah, what's going on? Any questions? Yeah, I mean, obviously, anything that deals with, like, kids and creepy kids, I can tell you're afraid. You want your blankie right now, don't you? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it, it kind of creeps people out. I think it just harkens back to when you're a child. There's something about seeing a creepy child that just seems like it's the the antithesis of everything evil. It's like, because children are supposed to be, you know, the epitome of innocence, and then you've got these creepy little children running around doing bad things. Sir, sir, People don't, don't like around. that. Don't turn around. I'm not gonna. I'm looking straight forward. Yeah, okay. Do -do 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 -do. Um, but yeah, there, there's all sorts of theories. Much of what the same thing that you guys are talking about right now, whether it's children of succubi, um, aliens, uh, a lot of alien theories. It just does seem to be like uh, mimicking, you know, a lot of alien encounters that we hear about with like the black eyes and mm -hmm. the, the cute little faces and the shorter stature. Um, so yeah, there's all it, sorts al of it also slightly mimics uh, part of the vampire legend where you have to allow the vampire to yeah, come in. Yeah, before they can cross the threshold, exactly. Because yeah. why aren't they just coming in? Like you know, it's almost like they have to have your permission to do that, an acknowledgement, a validation that they're there and they exist. And so I wonder if, you know, it goes back to that Tulpa effect again, too. I mean, what if this is just a creation that we've, like, manifested and we have to give power to it yeah. and Andrew, permission your, to affect us? Yeah, Andrew, what's your thoughts? I mean, does it sound vampirish to you? Well, I mean, it, I'm torn between is this just a very good urban legend or, but, I mean, as our guest is saying, he's talked to enough people that seem to be genuinely rattled by this. Uh, and, and like I just said, the thing that occurred to me is that's part of one of the old vampire legends is you have to give the vampire permission to enter your, your dwelling. And it, whether it's a car or a house, it seems to be that's what they need from these people before they can enter their lives and cause this havoc. I mean, not all vampires go after blood. There's some legends that vampires go after your, your life force in another way. So... Maybe, maybe this is some kind of vampire that takes people's potential of... Of happiness away from them. I mean, in giving them misery in return. I don't know. It's it's fascinating. So interesting because the more I'm hearing about this, what we're kind of learning, David, is that you know it seems like there's little pieces of lots of legends. You know, the vampire, like Andrew said, you have to be invited in. We're, we're combining them with with aliens and hybrids. We're combining them with with so many different facets of, of uh, urban legends. Real quick, thirty seconds in your gut. I mean, is there going to be more sightings? Are, is, are these things going to evolve? Where are black-eyed kids going? Oh, absolutely. I think we're going to continue to see more reports from uh, around the, the world, not just this country. And I, I think that we're going to see more variations in the encounters. Very cool stuff. David Weatherly, thank you so much for joining us. The name of the book is The Black-Eyed Children in fine bookstores everywhere. There'll be links from our website. Thanks so much for joining us. It's an incredible topic when we learn so many different facets of the paranormal come together and, and create new legends, or is it people are having experiences and we use those legends to try to explain what we're seeing? It's up to you, folks. Until next time, stay odd.